All right, let's get this out of the way. Let's take a look at this guy. So what this is, is the Acasis M4 case that puts your M4 Mac Mini on its side and gives you a fresh new look. We're going to talk about that next on Geekazine. What's up, my geeks? Jeffrey Powers from Geekazine, Think Magazine, put in a geek. Before we get started, I do have to say that Acasis did send this to me. They are not sponsoring the video and they have absolutely no say in what I say or review. All the thoughts are my own. I have a review down at geekazine.com forward slash review that tells you all my policies and procedures. I'd also like to thank my Patreons for supporting the channel. If you'd like to do so, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash geekazine. You can also tip the channel over at venmo.com forward slash geekazine. All right, so let's get into this really quick and why it took me a while to actually review this device. So really, it all started with this guy right here, which is the Casus Thunderbolt 5 enclosure, which you can connect up to your Mac Mini. I actually have a Mac Mini M4 with the Thunderbolt 5 ports inside. So I was really excited to get this. However, I wasn't too excited once it did come and I did test it. So basically what happened was I ran into a lot of issues. I thought it was a little bit a little bit flimsy not only how to open it but the fact that it's got a little rubber stopper instead of a screw in there so if this comes falling down to the ground and this flies open then this your mvme might be in danger of popping out and getting damaged in any case it has thermal pads that did not touch onto the mvme and in all reality i tried to connect it up to a windows pc and it did not work at all and that was several different Windows PCs that had real problems trying to connect to this. I was in contact with the Casus and they said, well, why don't you try this one? And this is the M4 case. It's a dock and it's a case. It's got extra, some extra features to it. And I said, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to fix the problems with this guy, first of all. So we did an unboxing. I did it live. We set it up. It was actually very straightforward to put together. You basically have to take off the bottom screws here and pull out the, the bottom here. Put your Mac M4 inside, close it up. Do not use the top screws. Do not pull this open. It'll be really hard to get out. And of course, you, you will lose that spring mechanism for the power button right there. So do not open it up at the top. But I did a full unboxing on that. What it does have is it is a multi-port option. It comes with three USB-A ports on, the, on one side. And then of course, on the other side, we have two display ports and then a PD port as well. And of course, on this side is your Mac for M4. Now, like I said, this is the Mac M4 that does have Thunderbolt 5. It's also got a 10 gigabit ethernet jack in there. So this is the higher end one. So this gives me a little bit more functionality in what I need to do. However, I did find some flaws with this, and that's where we are today. Let's show you everything else that we have on this, first of all, and then get into that those flaws. All right. So like I said, we have three USB-A ports on the front. They work great. There's no problem. On the back, however, here's, here's a couple interesting factors. This cord right here is the power cord from the Mac M4 to the dock because it needs to be powered somehow. But what was really interesting is whereas the Mac M4 USB are on their basically horizontal if you have it in a vertical standing vertical if it's on a horizontal standing this one right here is a 90 degree angle which really makes for a weird design right there and i noticed that when i first plugged it in and it's also bending this wire so if this wire was actually a little bit smaller and maybe went like this instead of like this then i would be somewhat okay with it but i actually did have to turn this thunderbolt and this is a thunderbolt 4 cable because this dock is not thunderbolt 5 compliant uh, just so you know, but if this was turned like this and that'd be okay, but I did have to put a little twist into the cable and that was the first problem I had with it. The other thing is it's just something that Apple wouldn't even put up with. If somebody came up with that, that for Apple, they'd say, hey, you know, can you fix that? Because that's that's not right. 
get get rid of all that. Find a way to make it look better. Second thing, let's talk about the storage that's on here, which is great. Inside of here, you have two NVMe in, uh, areas. So you can put in two, two drives and you can actually raid that so they work together. You can have up to 16 terabytes in here. So if you're doing a lot of editing, if you're doing a lot of storage or anything like that, you can put that in there. You put them together, they are running at Thunderbolt 4 speeds. So you get roughly at the best about 5,000 megabits per second. And of course, it really depends on what NVMEs you have in there and how you have it set up and the more storage, you know, the, the usual stuff. But you open this up through a bottom screw right here. You do have a couple thermal pads that do touch onto the NVMe, so that's not a problem there. Close that up, you're good to go. On the other side, we've got, it's basically a vent, but it looks exactly the same and it's, it's got a cool sound to it. Listen to this. The other storage that we will see on these is a SD card and a micro SD card, which are great for when you, of course, you need to transfer camera footage or anything like that. I do have a small problem with the SD card, and that is if you insert it, it doesn't do anything. I take it out and I insert it again, and then all of a sudden it works. Same thing for the TF card. I don't normally do the TF card because it's so small and you gotta click it in and sometimes those things pop out. I hate I hate these little these things. I will actually use an adapter and then a smaller micro SD card, but also with the main card, there's no real click or anything like that. It just basically pushes in. And I don't know if you heard that little extra click, but it just feels like it doesn't seat right. Even if I get that extra click in there and I pull it out, I put it back in and all of a sudden it recognizes it at that point. It's a minor issue, but it's still an issue nonetheless that I think that a case this really needs to address. And keep in mind, when I test this, I test these with different NVMe drives. I test these with different SD cards and micro SD cards, because if one doesn't work, the next one might. Maybe one's broken or anything like that. But I wanna make sure that this works. And of course, I'm finding that with this, it takes a couple tries to get it in, and then it does work. There's two lights on the side here that'll tell you about your SD cards. So if they're lit up, then that means that they're connected, but I'm always seeing these lit up. So I'm not exactly sure if one is supposed to be for the SD card and one's supposed to be the, for the MVME or not. From what I'm reading here, it's supposed to be both our SD, but there's always a blue light coming out of right here. Let's talk about the next problem with this device and that is your extra display ports now what's really cool about this is you can actually use this for the gaming setup using the display port you can get 144 hertz for a video however there are some caveats and the biggest caveat is a lot of mac users will use a mac monitor when you bring the display port into things and if it doesn't have a display port adapter you cannot use these display ports. In fact, I had a nice little conversation back and forth with the cases and said, hey, you know, if you plug in an adapter, that non-powered adapter does not work. And I use these all the time when it comes to uh, bringing display port into the monitor. So I know it works just fine. They came back and they said, well, yeah, we are aware of that problem. And that's pretty much where it is. I can always see that a cases comes can come back with a firmware update. And then that firmware update could update this whole box. Just like I was hoping with the 80 gigabyte Thunderbolt 5 drive. So far, no updates as of yet. And of course, I've had this for a couple months. I've had this for a little bit longer than that. I'd say a total of three months for both the cases. So I don't know if they're going to be doing any updates. And if you are planning to use the display port, then you're gonna have to get a a display that has display port natively into it and you can't use display port to hdmi adapter with that said everything else works just fine get the ethernet through the uh, 10 gig port i can actually hook up hdmi through here i can hook up a second display through through thunderbolt 5 i can put it into a dock i put it many docks into this already uh, and it works great whenever i'm transferring videos from things like my obsbot tiny 2 or anything like that I will use the SD card reader because it's one of the easiest devices I have for that. Even though there is that small, gotta take it out to put it back in to have it register. 
Other than that, I also use the NVMe on a regular basis. When I do any of my transfers or upgrades, like if I'm doing an AI upgrade of video, then I will use this thing. So it has a storage space. It does not disconnect on the M4. And just so you know, this does have Tahoe on the M4. I believe it's the fourth beta version and the final release coming out in probably a, a month in a month and a half. But for the most part, it is working just fine with all of this. So a little bit of ugliness in the cable. Display ports that do not work with adapters. If you have a regular display port, they plug right in. In fact, I have one, my main monitor is the NVIDIA G-Sync. Plugged in the DisplayPort cable and it came up just fine. I did run some tests and I did find that it was doing what I was expected. The first monitor will do 144 hertz. The second display monitor, of course, will not because it just doesn't have that much power to it. So, but this will work in the most part. If you don't have a DisplayPort display, then these are pretty much not going to be worth anything for uh, for you and then of course if you are using the sd cards like i said you got to take it out and put it back in for it to recognize otherwise it works as it's supposed to so a lot of people are probably saying okay so i have these small problems i don't use them right now but eventually you will be using them so now you're thinking oh now i got to get a display port display that's gonna be a few extra dollars but at least i'll be able to play some games on this thing at some high resolution so it's, it's a good or bad right there. But the bottom line is that we still have some problems with this. The bigger issue is when I talked to a Acasis, the response was a little bit more like, oh, okay, well, we know about it. As far as I know, there haven't been any updates on this, or no firmware updates or anything. I don't know if they can do firmware updates on these devices, but when you can go online and you can find other companies that are making cases similar to this that do exactly the same thing, and they have display ports that use can use adapters to connect up, and they have SD cards that you put it in and it works just fine, then these little things become a worrisome thing, especially since since I do have another device that doesn't work the way that I was expecting it to. So that's what I found. What did you find using the Acasis M4 dock? Let me know in the comments below. You can always contact me over at geekazine.com, youtube.com forward slash geekazine, where you can like, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you know when the next video comes out. And of course, if you want to support the channel, you can always go over to amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash geekazine, or if you're on YouTube, just down below. And we've got several different t-shirts that you can get, including this one. I like geek butts and I cannot lie. 80s Jesus saved me one floppy at a time, the cryptic message, and a lot more. Once again, just look down below if you're on YouTube or over at amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash geekazine. That's it for me for this one. And until next time, you guys geek out and compute on.